Hello, welcome to the session of standardized application at global scale. My name is Lei Zhang from Alibaba, and my co-speaker, Jared, comes from Alba. So I will start from what problems we are facing and how we solve them with O and the course plan. So the whole story began since 2018 when the team in Alibaba started to build one of the largest Kubernetes clusters in the world. The goal is to serve the developers and operators throughout the company and support its W11 sales festival, which is huge. The outcome is pretty good. We even published the awesome blog, which attracted a lot of attention and gave a lot of confidence to the community because they proved that Kubernetes works for super large scale. But feedback from our users, however, are unexpected. They even asked us why why we want to force them move to a new infrastructure system, which clearly brought no value from their perspective. So what's the problem here? We finally noticed there's a huge gap between what our users expected and what we provided in our Kubernetes cluster. First of all, API and primitives. What our users focus on are code, application, and CI CD pipelines. But if you look at from our Kubernetes cluster, what it provides are workloads like deployment, stable state, container level primitives like sidecar, ports, and infrastructure details like network policy, etc. The second issue is the levels of abstraction. For example, for application operators in our company, they are working on policies like how to do auto scaling, how to do automatic progress route, but what but what we expose to them, however, are Kubernetes service, ingress, permissives, and Istio virtual service. Yes, as Kubernetes experts like us, it's straightforward to assemble them into route strategy or auto scaling policy. But these primitives don't make any sense from application operator's perspective. The last issue is actually the worst one. It is a user interface. As powerful builders, we think, Kubernetes we think Kubernetes declarative API is very powerful and extensible, but our users definitely don't agree with it. They want to work with human-readable interfaces like dashboard, command line tool, or infrastructure as code. Writing YAML files, however, are like writing assembly language from their perspective, and no one wants to do that. We soon realized that these issues are not only problems in our company. They exist in the community for quite a long time. That's why we began to build modern application platforms for users. Yes, they are user-facing platforms, they're user-friendly, and what's more important is, they're all fully based on Kubernetes extensibility, CRDs and operators, I mean. So, did they solve our problem? Well, kind of. Our users stopped complaining about our Kubernetes anymore, since now they have application platforms or even service platforms, which, which are all great. But they didn't show happiness at all, since now they have too many platforms. This is because at a big company, the requirements from our users are highly diverse. For example, some applications are stable workloads, so we need to build them a stateful application platform, which with manual scaling policies, for example, or canary role strategies. However, there are also many applications or stateless. They use deployment as workload, flagger to do route, and HPA for auto scaling. And some other apps, they just prefer to go to serverless stuff. Then we have to use Kinetic to serve them. See? Although all these platforms have unique traits, they also share out in common. For example, all of them requires less crypt service. But as platform builders, we have to implement this functionality in different forms again and again since every platform speaks different APIs. We are creating more fragmentations, more silos, and more closed systems with in-house CRDs. This doesn't feel good. So we stop here and begin to rethink what we've done in the last whole year. Especially, we're trying to build application level platforms for our users. We want to make sure they are user-friendly, 
So we adopted various ecosystem tools and defined our own abstractions at will. It works. We also want to make sure the platforms are extensible. This is an essential value brought by Kubernetes, right? So we support different kinds of workloads, different forms of operational capabilities and strategies, and that's also why we build different platforms to focus on different scenarios. This also works. But what's messed up here is all of these platforms became silos. This actually raised a new challenge for us. Can we build them in a standard approach? This rethinking finally worked out as a standard to build application platforms which named Open Application Model, OWN. And we open sourced this work with collaboration on Microsoft last year. Essentially, OWN defined four application level primitives for Kubernetes in a standardized approach. Firstly, components. It's all about what workloads you want to deploy. In most cases, they are Kubernetes deployment, but they can also be like functions or your own Kubernetes operators. The second concept is traits, which are used to define how to operate the workload. Auto scaling, rollout, traffic, etc. are all perfect examples of traits. Some of them are provided out of the box by Kubernetes, but most of them come from the ecosystem, the CRDs and operators. This is also where abstractions mostly happen if you want to make your users' lives better. The third concept is application configuration. This is a YAML file to explicitly by chase to certain components. So you clearly know the topology of your app, instead of tracking them by labels or other unstructured approaches. The last but most important, the definitions. They are used to register CRD or any Kubernetes API resource as workload or chain. We will talk about this in detail soon. So all of these concepts are defined by Kubernetes API resource model. For example, component is essentially a template object for your workload and is versionized. If the developer modifies this component YAML file, for example, it will generate a new revision of the deployment in your cluster, which is immutable. Note that the workload section in the component YAML file is fully pluggable, so you're free to define any label of your abstractions in components here. Kubernetes deployment or Kinetic service, it all depends on you. For traits and application configurations, there are Kubernetes API resources at will. The application configuration in this example, it referenced the two components, the front end and the Redis. And it buys the port auto scaler and API gateway as chains for the front end component. So this application configuration could be used as a self-contained application definition file, which includes every dependency and operational capability your workloads need to run. The last one, definition. This is very interesting because for a platform, it's important for you to figure out which Kubernetes API or CRD is a capability we want to expose to our users. This means for the other API and CRDs, they are system-level APIs, and we don't want to leak them to our users. That's why we need to register CRD or Kubernetes API resource as workloads or traits and expose them to users. They will become the user-facing API for our platform, which our platform speak. You can see here the point is everything is extensible because if the users need another workload or trait, for example, what we need to do is simply install the Kubernetes CRD and the controller and register it as a new capability the platform support, either as a workload or as a chain. In this example, I demoed how we register Easter your virtual service as the traffic management chain in our platform. We can also define that it conflicts with another service mesh so the operators will not make mistakes in the future. Today, with the help of O, things are getting much better in Alibaba because we now have a unified model layer for all application platforms in our company. All of these platforms speak APIs such as component and application configuration, with their unique workloads and shapes to serve different scenarios. And what's more important is, for the common workloads and traits, that we don't need to reinvent those builds anymore. 
all these platforms now share a common pool of capabilities. So the platform builders just pick what they want and assemble them into their, their own platforms. It's so easy and neat. Besides as a building block for creating standard platforms, O also enabled us to distribute software at global scale with collaboration of cross plan project. This is really important. Now, I will let my friend Jared take from here. So please go ahead, Jared. All right, thank you, Harry, for showing us a little bit more about the standard application model and uh, OM and how we can use that to describe applications. Um, so one of the interesting things about real life applications is often they don't just live in a single place, right? Um, it's pretty common for applications to be spread out or the components of them to be spread out across uh, different regions and zones, different clusters, and maybe even entire cloud providers as well. There's a number of reasons you might want to do this. Um, probably the most popular are around availability and resiliency, where if one region goes down or uh, one cloud provider is down, their application running in multiple areas there makes it more resilient to those outages uh, because there's still parts of your application that are running and accessible, right? Um, cost is another reason too, where certain services may be cheaper in other cloud providers. So you know, choosing the cheapest ones from the cheapest clouds um, can reduce your overall operational costs. Um, and then another one is uh, for new or unique services. Um, say Amazon comes out with a brand new um, AI ML service or something like that, and you want to take advantage of it. Um, you might have your application running across uh, multiple cloud providers um, in order to use the latest and greatest services that make sense for your business. Of course, that does come with some challenges, though. Um, and as with anything, you really have to know uh, what are you building um, and act with intention there. Uh, because if you just want to start putting an application in you know, different regions or different places, uh, use a bunch of different services um, without actually knowing what you're trying to solve, you're not going to end up in a good place with that. So understand what you're building. Um, but then also understand the infrastructure needs of your application. Um, understand, um, you know, where you need to reduce latency or what services need to be accessible to what components in your application. And you have to factor all that in when you have the components running in various places around the globe, right? Um, when you start using a lot of different cloud providers or different platforms, you're going to run into some complexity there with uh, every cloud provider having their own dashboard, their own console, their own CLI tools, etc. cetera, um, and then different skill sets as well. So you kind of have to think about how much complexity do you want to take on um, in order to um, you know, get the benefits out of being able to run in multiple places. Sometimes you might even need to hire uh, for new skill sets uh, to be able to match what your application needs and where it needs to, needs to run. And then of course, all the operational stuff that comes along with the application, that gets a little more complicated too when you're running in multiple places. You want to be able to monitor it, uh, manage it, uh, make sure the policy is applied, all that operational stuff running across a lot of different areas becomes more complicated. So one solution here that uh, we believe to be pretty efficient is a control plane solution. Um, you know, we've seen control planes before for Kubernetes itself, right? Kubernetes is a control plane um, that is able to run a bunch of components like pods, let's say, across a, se a series or set of nodes. Um, so you can think of the same thing for a control plane that is running and managing a global application. So outside of the scope of just one cluster, we can have a centralized control plane that puts all of our decision making and our orchestration and scheduling, et cetera, into a single centralized place with a single uh, API to access it as well. Um, so you put that logic and the complexity into the control plane to manage this global application and deployment and infrastructure for us, and it can greatly simplify um, the burdens that we put on ourselves as humans, right? So one particular control plane that meets this description here is an open source project it's called Crossplane. And so it is a uh, CNCF sandbox project now, uh, just recently, as in the last month. Um, but it is an open source control plane that is really focused on um, being able to provision infrastructure 
and get it ready for the applications uh, and be able to connect everything together so that applications have everything they need to be running and successful. And so there's three main parts to the design and uh, feature set here for Crossplane. The first one is to be able to provision infrastructure itself. Uh, you can use that, do that declaratively using the Kubernetes API, like with Kube Control. Um, you can bring up you know, an Amazon uh, RDS database or Google Cloud SQL or whatever you want directly using the Kubernetes API. But the more power here actually comes in uh, ability to be able to create your own uh, infrastructure API uh, without writing any code. So you can build your own um, you know, brand new declarative API that kind of captures what it means to be an application or a set of infrastructure in your organization. We'll get into more details on that, but essentially, you know, capturing the configuration, policy, best practices, um, and putting that all behind a API that your applications can self-service on demand use to get the infrastructure that they need. And then the third feature area here is around uh, running and deploying applications to uh, use that infrastructure that we're bringing up. Uh, so Crossplane is the um, OM uh, open application model implementation uh, for Kubernetes. So we see a big tie in here with Crossplane as a control plane and OM for having a standard uh, normalized way of declaring our applications. So as we've been talking about, the standardized applications, they'll need infrastructure at some point with you know, databases or buckets, some networking primitives, all that sort of stuff. And this control plane API that we've been talking about um, is a perfect place, a nice centralized place to do the provisioning and getting the infrastructure set up for our standardized apps to consume. And so a little bit more details about this API, this infrastructure API that we've been talking about. So when you have the ability to define your own API, your own infrastructure API, you can put all of the uh, important details um, of what it means to be, let's say, a Postgres database in your organization, what policy, what configuration you want, all this complexity uh, around the standard way or best practices ways to do infrastructure for your organization, you can capture that and encode that in this API here so that when uh, applications want to consume infrastructure, they have this easy to use API and it's a safe, uh, secure way of getting infrastructure on demand for the applications that need it, but um, making sure that it's aligned with the policy and configuration and best practices that is important to your organization. And the last slide here, we have a uh, diagram of what this looks like for a centralized control plane providing an infrastructure API to global applications. So we see in the blue box here the cross plane control plane and this infrastructure API that you have designed and declared there. So the control plane is um, you know, spanning, we can think of it as spanning across multiple cloud providers. So it uh, has connections to them and can bring up when needed or provision the infrastructure in any of the cloud providers that you have it pointing at. And then this infrastructure API that you have declared uh, will be published to all the various clusters where you want to be running your applications. So this is um, a bit of a new design here for the Crossplane project where we have this uh, application operator running inside each one of the clusters that you want to uh, be running your applications and where those applications will need some infrastructure. So basically you can think about it as the application uh, needs something like a database and it will look at the API, the infrastructure API that you have published and declaratively state, hey, I need a database from this infrastructure API and it will, uh, that request will be sent off to the centralized control plane where your infrastructure API lives and it will turn that simple request of, okay, I need a database and it will turn that into well, what does a database mean for my organization? And all the policy, all the configuration, best practices, all that stuff will um, be enforced when the actual database gets provisioned in one of the cloud providers there. So that's a bit of a picture of it. Um, and let's actually see it all in action now with a demo. In this demo, we're going to walk through how to build a global control plane API 
uh, and use that API to provision infrastructure and deploy standardized applications uh, all in a global context. So let's go ahead and get started on that back at the command line here. So I just want to get you up to speed on what I already have set up. Basically, all I have set up is the uh, global control plane itself. So I've got Crossplane installed, uh, Crossplane's little package manager, uh, some support for Ohm and for Alibaba, and that's basically it. I haven't defined my infrastructure API yet. I don't have any applications running. So let's go ahead and start uh, defining the infrastructure API as the very first step. So I'm going to need to do three things here to basically define and publish my API. So let's start with the infrastructure definition that I'm going to create. Basically, I am saying, uh, or start as the first step of starting to define my infrastructure API, I'm going to say, um, okay, one type uh, that you can create uh, from my infrastructure API is going to be Postgres. And I'm going to provide a schema of things that you're allowed to set, things that you can configure when you're asking for Postgres, when an application is requesting Postgres. Basically, all we're putting in here is the uh, amount of storage, the size of the database. So an application could say, I need 100 gigabyte Postgres. And that's really all that they get to say. Um, the next phase is publishing this API. So just an infrastructure publication object uh, that will ensure that this API is published to the um, application clusters where the actual containers and pods, et cetera, that um, have the application logic will be running the ones that need this infrastructure. And then the final part of the infrastructure API that I'm creating is that we've defined Postgres uh, as part of the API, but we haven't really said what it means underneath. So in this particular infrastructure API that I'm building uh, as the infrastructure owner, I'm going to say that when an application requests Postgres, um, what they're actually gonna get is an Alibaba cloud RDS instance uh, for Postgres. And then remember how we said that a application developer, they just get to say how big the store amount of storage for it. But me, as the infrastructure owner, uh, gets to say a lot more than that. I'm going to specify all the configuration, the policy, the best practices, all that sort of stuff is what I have control over. And it's underneath the API line. Right? It's not exposed to the user and they don't get to control that sort of stuff. So I have some more details, uh, configuration and policy, etc., about this Postgres instance that an application can request. And that basically is what makes up my infrastructure API, my custom infrastructure API that I am publishing and providing for applications in my organization. So when they request Postgres, they can just say how big it is, but then all of my important policy will be applied to it underneath. Okay, so those are the three things that we need to create. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my cheat sheet here to copy and paste them into the command prompt. And so we're creating our infrastructure definition, we're publishing it, and we're giving the specific Alibaba composi composition uh, for that Postgres uh, API that we're defining. All right, so the infrastructure API is now published and defined and ready. So let's move on to a totally different role. So, so far I've been the infrastructure owner. I've been defining and creating and publishing this infrastructure API for my applications, uh, my application teams, but I haven't actually um, done anything with the application yet. So now I'm gonna switch roles to be an application developer. I have, uh, you know, I'm spending my time writing code. I'm creating container images that contain my code. Um, and so for me, uh, in this application that I'm writing, I'm just going to define a set of components for it, right? It's, um, you know, uh, what makes up my application is a Postgres database, right? So I need Postgres. I have a requirement uh, in my application for Postgres. And then I have a number of containers uh, that I want to run to to access the Postgres database um, to show some uh, flights that are currently running, uh, some earthquake information from the database, um, you know, just a couple other components like showing weather as well, uh, and a UI for it all. So that is uh, all the components that make up my application. Uh, you know, I'm the application developer here, and this is what I produce. So let's go ahead and create those two. 
So I'm going to go ahead and apply my application components. And those are all now all created. And then let's go on to the final phase here of, uh, we've seen two roles so far. We've seen the infrastructure owner who defines the infrastructure API. We've seen the application developer who defines the components that make up their application. And now this third persona or this uh, role that is the application operator who's in charge of actually putting the application components together in a, uh, you know, a way at runtime that makes sense. So uh, there's a couple of traits that we're going to apply to the components uh, that our application de developer created. Um, so we're going to uh, apply a scalar trait so that you know the various some of the components of the application are going to run with the higher replica count. So we're going to scale those up for them. And uh, we're also going to uh, specify some information about um, where the data can be picked up from. So, you know, the application developer said they need Postgres that came from the infrastructure API that we created, and we're going to tie it all together here. So let's go ahead and create this uh, application configuration as well. Okay. And once this runs here, this basically kicks everything off. So this starts the process of, uh, you know, we've modeled all this stuff with the open application model, and then Crossplane is going to take those uh, general ways of describing the application, uh, like components and workloads and traits and things like that that we've talked about. And it's gonna start turning those into real primitives uh, that can actually run and deploy and use, um, uh, sorry, you know, run the application itself and, uh, you know, provision the infrastructure from the infrastructure API and kind of get everything up and running all together. So we should start seeing this come together. Let's uh, take a quick look of, you know, what's actually running right now. Um, this is a small command. I don't think I needed to copy paste that one, but I did for my cheat sheet. So basically, uh, we can see that we have a number of our containers are now up and running, and the data API one is not ready yet. Uh, so this is the one that wants to talk to Postgres, and uh, most likely Postgres isn't quite ready yet because it does take a while to spin up in Alibaba Cloud and you know on demand bring a brand new database uh, in the cloud, like a managed database in Alibaba Cloud up and running. So let's get a little more details about um, that Alibaba RDS instance. Um, it's in the creating state, so we're going to need to wait for it to finish creating, and then the rest of our application will be able to pick it up and uh, start talking to it, and the rest of the application will just start working. So let's go ahead and wait for that just a second. Okay, let's check in on the database instance, and it looks like it's now ready and in the running state. So if the Alibaba, Alibaba Cloud database instance is up and running, then we should check on our application pods that are running in GKE. And they are all now running, and uh, the data API is able to connect to that Alibaba uh, Postgres. And so everything looks like it's up and running. And so now let's try to get into the, uh, the UI for this application. Let's look at the load balancer uh, for my GKE cluster. And let's go ahead and go to that and find... Uh, the dashboard here basically. So the application that I brought up um, is up and running. It's talking to the database. It's got uh, data from Postgres. And so we could start looking at, you know, in this application, some of the data that was uh, captured for us and held in our Alibaba Postgres database. So we can see various flights that are up and running right now. Uh, we can see the latest earthquake information. You know, this is all real time that's uh, picked up from various services and stored in our Postgres. Um, oh, that's a big uh, earthquake up near Alaska, or sorry, British Columbia. That's, um, hopefully that's nothing to be concerned about. And, you know, various weather and stuff too. So basically, um, everything looks to be up and running, which is great. Uh, so uh, let's try to wrap all of this up here. So basically, we did three different things where we defined an infrastructure API uh, for uh, my applications to consume. We gave them some knobs to configure, such as the size of it, but we published it for them. Uh, you know, as part of that infrastructure API, I specified what does it mean to be Postgres? It means in my environment that I'm going to pick up that database from Alibaba. It's going to have this particular uh, configuration and policy. 
and then my application developers to find all the components for their application, uh, the fact that they need Postgres, um, you know, how big they want that Postgres, um, and then the application operator um, took the components of the application and um, specified some traits for them to make them uh, more scaled, uh, you know, put everything together in GKE so that we ended up with a live service that's up and running and running in GKE, but we've got infrastructure provisioned from our custom declarative infrastructure API and our global control plane that resulted in infrastructure like the database, the Postgres instance, being provisioned in Alibaba. So all these things got put together with a standard way to define our applications, a global control plane with an API to safely on demand, self-service, consume infrastructure in a way that has been uh, you know, blessed and codified all the best practices and policy and configuration that our infrastructure owners feel is important. We brought all this together in a very standardized way uh, at a global scale. So let's head back to our slides real quick to finish this all off. So basically, you know, Ohm uh, is an open source spec, a, you know, Crossplane is an open source project as well. Um, so we have communities around those and we'd love for everyone to get involved. Happy to jump in and help you get started. Here's some uh, helpful links on where to find the quick start documentation. We're active on Twitter and Slack and everything. So, uh, you know, if you want to learn more, uh, contribute, uh, open issues, anything like that, we are a happy community and we're growing and we'd love to have you. So I think that pretty much wraps everything up and uh, Harry and I will be here to answer a couple of questions um, at the end of this recording. But otherwise, thank you very much for attending and we're uh, happy to share this information with you today.